Hi, I'm Pete Sharman, a product manager with the Enterprise Manager team. In this tutorial I'll show you how to use Exadata Sparse Clone to create a thin clone of a pluggable database, as well as a thin clone of a non-pluggable database running in an Exadata environment. In earlier releases of the Enterprise Manager product, we introduced Snap Clone functionality with engineered systems such as Exadata. Snap Clone is a way of taking advantage of copy and write technology to produce a thin clone of a database allowing cloning of an existing database in a way that takes only a very small subset of the amount of storage used by the existing database. In earlier releases, SnapClone on engineered systems used external storage, such as the Oracle ZFS storage appliance or NetApp Viler, to store the data file artifacts on the clone. The downside of using these external storage systems is they are not Exadata or aware, and cannot take advantage of a lot of the unique innovations that Xdata has brought to the table as you see on the right hand side here such as smart scan and hybrid columnar compression. Now with Xdata sparse clone you can create fast space efficient snapshot databases in two simple steps. Firstly you create a sparse disk group on your Xdata storage and then you either create a snapshot database or a snapshot pluggable database that reads data from a read-only test master database and writes to the sparse disk group. Depending on the environment you are building, the Exadata snapshots are initiated either by a snapshot copy for pluggable databases or a clone DB operation for non-contained databases. The test master database must be in read-only mode. Because we are using a disk group on the Exadata storage, all the Exadata features work as expected on the snapshot databases. Diagrammatically you can picture this as shown. On the left hand side of the picture we have our production database. We use DataGuard or an ARM and clone operation to take a full copy of the production database to our test or development environment. The test master is read only. The snapshots are made up of sparse files composed only of change blocks. Other data is read from the test master. Now we understand the concepts behind Exadata sparse clone, let's have a look at it in action. Firstly we'll look at using it to clone a pluggable database and then we'll look at using it to clone a non-container database. Here you can see we have a database called CRM Prod. In this case it's actually a real application clusters database. You can see that by seeing the, the uh, different instances on two different nodes. Again I can right click on this database and walk through the cloning menu to create a test master. I need to provide some credentials on this environment. And again I'm taking this test master as at the current point in time. I can change the display name so that it's something more meaningful. Notice it's defaulted to a database type of rack. Uh, that's because we doing this off a rack database, but remember this is a read-only environment that we want to build here, so let's swap that back to single instance because rack environment will give us nothing. So let's select the Oracle home for that. In this case I'm going to select the second node of the Exadata cluster, and again I need to provide some SysASM credentials. We have the same sort of configuration options that we had available to us before. So this time I'm going to leave it again in the same disk group and I'm going to pick a listener and set up a password for the administrative users at Sys System and DBS and MP. This time I'm going to change some of the parameters so let's drop the SGA target down as well as the PGA. And in this case I'm going to change the CPU count down as well. Again, I'm not going to change anything as far as the data masking is concerned. I'll change the uh, name of the deployment procedure so it's just a little bit more meaningful to me. 
And again, I'm going to schedule this to run immediately. So let's submit that to run. And again, I'll do an expand all. And I'll set it to a 30 second refresh. Again, I'm going to pause the recording while that takes place. We can see that the test master has uh, been created and it obviously didn't take anywhere near as much time as the last one. That is because the size of this database was much smaller than the, the test master we created last time. So let's go and create a sparse clone off this one. And to do that we need to go back to the databases page so we can actually see the database. We can see here the same create snapshot clone link as we used before. I can tell that the database is a test master because I have this disabled test master link available to me as well. We can of course just use that create snapshot clone command like we did before, but this time we're going to take you into the clone management dashboard so you can see that as well. Here you can see the clone management page. We can hide the target navigation region by clicking on this button to see a bit more of the clone management region instead. At this stage we can see there are no clone databases created for the database as you would expect since we just created this test master. So let's click the create button here and create a snapshot clone. As you can see this has started the same wizard as we used before so I'll walk quickly through the next few steps without too much explanation because you've seen it all before. One thing you will notice that's slightly different is on the second step of the wizard we have a couple of extra configuration options we didn't have before, the reader log file size and also the recovery file locations. I'm going to leave those at their defaults. Finally, once we get to the review stage, I can again just look at all the details that have been provided and if I'm happy with those, I can submit it. Again, you can see it's only taken a few minutes to create the client, so I can go back to the database targets page now. And if I drill into the clone management page for that database, I can see there's now a sparse clone has been created as we expected. In this screen watch you've seen how easy it is to create Exadata smart clone snapshot databases using both a pluggable database and a non-container rack database as a source. I'm Pete Sharman, thanks so much for watching.